Hey everyone, if I can do a quick little Apple fanboy rant, this is like my fifth take that I'm trying to do on this video and it has been a pain in the ass using the software that I was trying to do on my Windows machine. So I decided, hey, I'm not going to stop trying to use Windows just because I was defeated. Instead, I'm going to just do a workaround, right? So I'm using TeamViewer now and so let's do this video tutorial series on how to use Node.js, which is Java side, uh, sorry, server side JavaScript, on a and using it to call the particle API calls. Oh my God, guys, I can't talk. But anyways, so let's start by seeing if we even have Node.js installed on our machine. And you can go to the start menu and typing in run, and then go into type it in cmd for the command prompt. And I'll do Node-V. And push enter and I see that I do currently have node installed on this machine because it gives me a version number right there but if I didn't or if I didn't have it installed then you can just open up a web browser and then type in node JS and then you'll see it's gonna be one of the first results and you can go ahead and download it and since I'm using a Windows machine I would have done the Windows installation but it depends on what uh, what operating system you're using and once it's installed, again, we can go ahead and bring up that command prompt by, sorry, I'm on a Mac, so I can't do it, but you could do the Apple and the R button at the same time, or sorry, the Windows button and the R button at the same time, and that would bring up this little run window, and then type in CMD. And now let's start using some node, and I'll start using node by just simply typing in node and now we're inside of node.js and now we can start typing javascript javascript like it was a like we were doing it in a browser so i'll do var chi is equal to badass semicolon to end it and now we'll do a console.log and just say something like hello and then concatenate that with the variable that we had up there so hello Kai would equal hello badass so that's just a little bit of node and I'll exit that now what we're gonna want to do is create a new directory to house our project that we're gonna create right now and inside of there I'm gonna rename this to node project and we're gonna want to create a file now so I'll do file. This is a blank file. I'll save it as. Or save would just do the same thing. And we'll navigate to this directory that we just created. So go to the desktop and node project. And we'll call it just app.js as is the standard for the main uh, JavaScript file that you will be using. And we'll come down here and we want to call it a dot JavaScript file, not Java. Very different languages. And save it. Now if we go here and open, we can see that we have the file right there, although I'm not 100% confident that it's saved correctly because I didn't put the extension type right there. So I'll do a save as app.js and that's just something to learn from. So we'll save it there. And now it's saved as the correct file type. And if we go to the particle documentation and we'll start doing some of those API calls just to take a look go to the documentation page and go to the references and then select the language that you're using in this case we'll be using JavaScript and right away it says okay before you can even start using this baby you gotta install these dependencies right here and npm is the file that we'll use to install everything. It's simply the node package manager that comes installed with node already. So I'll bring up the command prompt again and we actually need to navigate to that directory where the file is. So if I do dir see what's up, I see that I have the desktop um, listed inside that directory. So I'm going to change my directory by typing in cd and we'll go to the desktop. And since I know that on the desktop I have this node project directory there, I can skip a step and just go ahead and uh, navigate inside of that directory. So I'll go node project and do a dir just to see what's in there. And you see that we have that app.js file. And again, we can see it visually here side by side. 
we have that app.js file. Now what I need to do is initialize the with by calling npm right here we're going to initialize a file that's going to store all the information for the dependencies that we have and it's going to hold some other information like the name of our application the version it is and stuff like that so i'll just do npm init and it's going to ask us some questions and i'll just push return for everything right now because i'm pretty lazy and it's created another file right here and you can go ahead and open it if you want to just take a look at what's in it just add some information about our app and next it says that we should let's see if it is, says that uh, we should we can skip that we can skip that these are just other methods of including these libraries that we're going to need oh and we should actually include that library now by doing the npm install particle api.js dash js I hope you guys knew I meant that and while that's going I'll start looking at some other documentation to see what it says to do so what we're gonna want to start doing is logging in so we can get our authentication token and this is just real I'll show you some real world uses later um, in a neater app but I want to get you guys running off the ground so we'll go into that app.js and we'll paste that right there including the files that we just put inside that and we installed. We need to include the libraries right here and that's what that's doing with the require. Then we're creating a object and we'll invoke some functions on that object in just a second. And we can use this function right here. However, we're going to use this one right here that includes promises. And this is going to be a lot better for us and a lot more user friendly. Go ahead and paste it and instead of using just a string right here and a string right here I'm going to create some variables and I will foolishly put my credentials Okay, and now username, I'll just use that variable that we created, username and then password. Save my file, and now what happens if we try to call it? So I will actually clear everything. What happens if we try to run this file I meant to say? So let's go ahead and do node, and then type in the file name, app, to try to run it. App.js, right? what happens too small for me to see I don't know if anything happened right there nope save and then run it it's gonna give us What errors are we getting? Oh, don't know what error I'm getting. Did it not save? Because it should have saved right now and Uh, oh, mm. so newbie guys. So that's a good example of just reading it through and just letting it debugging. And now, if we do the call, we'll go ahead and get this API call or uh, this authentication token, which is going to be very useful for us. So I'm going to go ahead and Control C to copy that baby, and I'm going to delete everything that's here, and I'm going to delete everything that is up here and we'll just keep these variables where we call the library or we include it inside the code and now what I want to do is now that we have the authenticate the authentication token I'm gonna go ahead and list the devices associated with my account 
So we see this list of ices call. First, I'll go ahead and say a token is equal to and it close that string and actually make that a variable. Copy this right here. Since I already have the token variable, I'll just copy from there down. And if I include that in my code, now when we save it, we're going to see some cool stuff happen. It's going to return some objects to us and we're going to read through those objects. These are the particle devices and it's going to give us some information like their IDs, um, like their IDs, if it's connected, when the last time it was connected, and all that goodies. So we need to get fairly familiar with reading through this JSON data that it returns. And just take a look at it a little bit. And there's that bad boy. So if you just look at it, it's given us each device. There's three devices associated with my account. It gives you some information like the ID that they have. And we can uh, call functions ex that they have exposed to the cloud and uh, variables and other sorts of goodies like that just based off the ID. So we'll need that and that's going to be really useful. And we can see other things like its IP address that I had and the last time that it was heard and other cool information like that. And you'll see as we uh, go further into this series that there's other calls that will give us more information about the devices. Alright, so I'll see you in the next one guys.